Week, and today I'm honoured to welcome somebody that makes me really proud of what she does. It's very apt that we have a beautiful young Ghana lady coming up here and welcoming you to our country. So I'd like to introduce uh, Nash Turner. Me. Today we stand on the land of the Red Kangaroo Dreaming. We thank and praise our ancestors for leaving this beautiful land we all call home. Thank you. Where the home draws, Mayor Mitchum. <laughs> thank you, Mary. So, good morning everybody, and what a beautiful morning to be on Ghana country. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the, this land is unceded. It always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And to that end, I thank and to that end, I thanked Ghana people who continue to welcome us, you know, to this beautiful country. And I pay my respects to all Aboriginal people here today. Um, particularly Ghana elders, past, present and emerging, really. <laughs> um, 
I acknowledge Louise Miller Frost, the new member for, well, uh, for Boothby. Welcome and congratulations. Um, Nat Cook, uh, the, the Honourable Nat Cook now. <laughs> Always was. <laughs> Our new, new Minister for Human Sur Her Services. Catherine Hutchison, our brand new member for Wade. So glad that you're there and here. Uh, councillors, I believe we have Councillor Hockley and Councillor Banch. If there's anyone else, I'm really sorry. You could yell out now. No? Definitely by silence. Um, and the co-chairs of BRG, Marie, Dr Marie Gould and Uncle Emerging Tamaru. <laughs> Mostly, um, I welcome, well, I acknowledge all of you that are here today in the spirit of reconciliation. I was talking to Marie this morning and we both said, you can feel a change in the air. It's almost like you can touch it. It's almost like you can smell it. And five years ago, five years ago, Aboriginal people from across, across the country met and crafted the Uluru Statement from the Heart. And this beautiful, clear, heartfelt message spells out the way forward and it doesn't ask for much it asks for constitutional reforms to empower aboriginal people to have power over their own destiny a first nations voice and makarata the coming together after a struggle for a makarata commission to supervise the process of agreement making and truth telling not really complicated so i am really ashamed that after seemingly bipartisan support and all the time and the effort and the hope and the trust and the goodwill that went into creating that statement, that our government of the time chose to reject the result of such extensive collaboration and research. However, I feel there's a change and I am so hopeful that things are about to change. Our new federal government has committed um, to a referendum and while I personally feel that this, like the uh, recent uh, postal ballot, is an unnecessary step, I think that Australians will overwhelmingly tell our federal parliament to get on with the job of embedding voice, treaty and truth into our constitution. And in State Parliament, our new first ever Aboriginal Attorney General, Kaya Ma, Minister for Aboriginal Affairs, and he tells me the order is Minister for Aboriginal Affairs, then Attorney General, which is just weird, um, <laughs> has voted to start the treaty process at a state level. So, whoa! <laughs> Since I stood here in 2019 and asked what I, as a privileged white person, could do to support reconciliation without being tokenistic, this community and particularly Blackwood Reconciliation Group have provided many, many answers. The Uluru Statement from the Heart Forum, which was held jointly by the Blackwood Reconciliation Group and the Better Booth Big Group in late 19, uh, 2019, had about 400 people there and it provided a very clear message with a motion from the floor of that meeting to Mitcham Council. And the motion was that um, a voice to power in the Mitcham Council, as is called for in the Uluru Statement from the Heart, be created and that a wrap so a, rec a reconciliation action plan be embedded into the Mitcham Council. And I don't want to be braggy, but I can report back that the reconciliation action plan process is having an absolutely profound effect on our organisation. And we've done lots of things and I don't want to reel them all off here, but the most important thing we're doing is cultural awareness training. Which is, and, and that delivery is being life-changing for many, many of our um, many of the people within council, but particularly our managers, um, who have changed the way that they're doing business, having undergone this training. Um, and also we're seeing a ripple effect through the council and also in conjunction with BRG throughout the community. And I wish to staff, uh, thank the staff at council for the depth of their commitment to this process. It's been absolutely fantastic. I see one just over there. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but I also wish to thank the Black and Red Conciliation Group for organising today, today's March. What an absolutely wonderful turnout. Black and Red Conciliation have been around forever, for, for more than 25 years. And through them and their ongoing persistence, you are giving voice 
and truth telling. You are, have been integral in creating this change and so I thank all the members of the Black Reconciliation Group because you are at the basis of this feeling of change in our community. So I think a round of applause from BRG for BRG. Now we'll get into the orders from politicians, and I'd like to invite Young and Dalia to catch up here, please. Thank you, Uncle Tamaru, and I apologise for my voice. It's either going or coming, I'm not sure. But, um, Namani, Nainari, Catherine Warrior Hutchison, Mani Nabudni, Colbrook, Ghana, Muna, Uncle Tamaru's teaching me, Nadalu, Nana Yata. Campanthi, Natalia. My name's Catherine Hutchison and I'm the new OMP in this area and I am being brave and trying to learn Ghana language so I hope I did an okay job but um, it's really important to me that we do work side by side and we do our best to walk towards reconciliation and I'm very proud to be in a government that has made that commitment today. Well, I'm making it again today. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was really fortunate to attend the screening of Colebrook um, Reconciliation Park, Reconciliation Park uh, the movie, that, or the documentary you're going to be able to watch today if you haven't already. Um, it was a story about the house that was here and the, and the stolen generation of, and the many that were brought here um, against their will and taken from their families and their communities. It's a terrible story. I grew up near here, um, 1975 I was born. Uh, the house was demolished before that. But as someone who grew up in this area, I didn't know anything about um, what happened here for such a long time, and neither do a lot of people that I speak to. So it's really important that we get out there and we start talking about what happened here. We start telling the truth about what happened, and that way we can bring everybody together towards reconciliation. It's important that we have the voice treaty and truth, and that we're able to share the stories, no matter how painful they are. So I welcome. Well, don't worry. I'd like to thank you all for coming along today. It's really important that we continue to grow this walk. Congratulate the Blackbird Reconciliation Group on the 25th anniversary. And hopefully we can just grow and grow as, as we go forward. But nice to see you all here. Thank you so much, Catherine. And thank you for attending our meetings, listening and yeah watching the film, it's the way forward just to listen. Um, next we've got the Honourable Nat Cook who um, will speak in her role as the Human Ministers, her Human Services Minister for South Australia and also behalf, on behalf of the um, Premier Peter Malinowskis. Um, thank you so much for having me. I acknowledge I'm on stolen Ghana land that's never been ceded. I pay my respects to all elders past, present and clearly emerging back here. Um, and I would like to, on behalf of uh, the South Australian Peter Malinowskis Labor Government, um, acknowledge the apology for the treatment of Aboriginal people over generations, but also acknowledge this time to talk is over. We know where we're going, it's just the how. Truth, treaty and voice will happen under our government. I'm here speaking on behalf of the Premier Peter Malinowskis, but the lead for Truth, Treaty and Voice, the voice will be Kayam Ma, the first initiated man in our parliament, the first Aboriginal man to hold the role of Attorney General. A kinder, more equal, fairer community for all of us. I just feel like a weight <laughs> has lifted off of me and our team. So I can only imagine and hope that all of our First Nations people feel exactly that. Natalia. Thank you. I think that, that lightness and that hope is something that we're all feeling. The next person I'd we'd like to introduce, Tamara is also busy getting children ready for singing. Um, is Louise Miller Frost, the recently elected Labor MP for Boothby. Woo! Good 
party. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Ghana land, unceded, and I'm very honoured to be here. I'd like to pay my respects to any Aboriginal people here, First Nations people here in the community. Um, 14 years ago, Kevin Rudd gave the apology in Parliament and apologised for treatment, for laws, for hundreds of years of discrimination and, and cruelty. Five years ago, Uluru Statement from the Heart, and we haven't acted on it since. Eight days ago, we elected a new government, and in his first speech, Anthony Albanese committed to implementing Uluru Statement from the Heart in full in our first term. <laughs> I think what that says to you is that this is important business. This is the thing that he said in his first speech. And then we saw the flags in Parliament House change and we now have an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flag in every press conference. I'd have to agree, I also feel that the country has changed and obviously I have a fairly vested interest in that, but it feels kinder. It feels hopeful. People feel happier. I really hope that that is actually how we're feeling. We will do this in our first term of government. We've committed to do that. Um, that will be a referendum because that's the way you change the constitution and we will get there. So I would appeal to, to you and to get out in the community and make sure that we have this community backing for the referendum. We have to actually get the vote through in order to get that voice. So voice, treaty, truth. We need to get the referendum through. Thank you. It's fantastic to see you all here today, and I'm really honoured to be here. Thank you. Thank you.